What is up guys, welcome back to my channel, my name is Jesus Conde and today we're going to be painting parchment in six steps, so let's get started. So the first thing that we're gonna do is make a mask and we're just gonna make it using a normal layer under the drawing. The drawing was originally made on paper and I took a picture of it, um, sent it to my Google Drive and then put it here. And I'm just, as you can see, I'm just uh, painting a flat color, gray. Um, and that's gonna be enough for me to do a clipping mask later. Uh, you may be asking, what the hell is a clipping mask? And it's basically just whatever you draw on, on that layer is gonna be inside of this, um, this shape that you're painting. Um, so what, what you have to do is basically you have this layer with this flat color, you're just going to create a new layer. And if you press alt in that new layer and then click the, the layer below, um, automatically transform into a clipping mask. And as you can see, I'm just drawing, uh, sorry, painting, uh, whatever color I want and it stays inside of that shape that I painted. Uh, before now whatever you want to do after that is your your decision but i mainly use it for masking uh the base colors that i'm going to be using after that i like to paint uh, freely i don't like to to be constrained too much about um with the clipping mask but it's a it's a very simple thing to do you can also paint it however you want, like directly using the colors that you want. You don't have to necessarily do a clipping mask. Um, in this step, which um, is a little bit more complex than the other ones, we're gonna start doing the shadows, volume, and occlusion. Um, the 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 cast shadows will be basically the shadows that will that will make the it will be projected on the object um, because of blocking the light that, that is coming from above, right? And you also have the occlusion shadows, which is when you have two objects that are too close, in this case, between the pages, between the paper, the parchment, uh, it's gonna be a little bit darker. And you also wanna do the volume, which is uh, mainly what, makes you gives you the like the information about what kind of shape this is and in this case this is a cylinder so we want to make the edges of this cylinder darker so you kind of you can perceive the volume of this cylinder even if it's paper whatever it is it's just gonna be that um, we're gonna reduce it to the idea that it's just a cylinder and it turns out that it has layers inside. Between those layers, you have you have those dark areas, and in the center of it, it's gonna be even darker because it's kind of like a hole. So you have to put more shadow as it goes in. Um, and well, you also have this. Um, um, how do I say that? Well, the thing that holds the paper together. Um, it's gonna be, I was gonna say bow, but it's not. And as long as you make things look um, uh, proper enough, like this is a cylinder shape, you're not doing any weird um, decisions about what kind of volume it has, um, it's gonna look good, especially with the highlights. Now that we are on the highlights, what I mean by that is you don't wanna do highlights that are like point kind of shape uh, which is the kind of uh, highlight that you will find on a spherical shape this is a cylinder so the highlight should be kind of a line across the the whole surface of the cylinder so it's not really um you cannot do like spots of light it will look completely weird uh what else you can do well i guess that that will be the the worst case scenario that you do like a dots of light 
that's what you will get if if it was a, a spherical kind of shape. In this case, it's a cylinder. So you want these highlights to be long across the whole surface of the, the cylinder, right? And because of the type of material, which is not that reflective, you want it to be soft. Um, I'm not saying it's not intense. It could be intense kind of a highlight, but it should be soft, like very open. You don't want a you don't want a thin line of highlight that you will get on like a plastic kind of material. This is a paper, so it should be kind of like soft, like very diffuse um, kind of um, um, highlight. And we're also adding another light coming from the left, which is gonna be kind of a backlight, you you will say. And I'm not too fan of that one in this case scenario because this is um this is a very light background. Usually I do backlights when the background is a little bit darker. Um, but yeah, I, I guess it works. It's not that bad, especially on the blue uh, material there. Now, the bounce lights, usually you will get something more um, obvious if there was another color in. But in this case, you can also try to imagine. So this paper has a color and the light is bouncing from that, from that surface to another one and to another one and to another one. But it's all of the same color. So inside of the parchment roll, you will get this kind of a more saturated version of the color because the, the, the light is bouncing against each other inside of there. And also under the shadow, I like to always put a little bit of more saturated version of the same color because that way it looks like the light is coming through the paper or something like that. I made this kind of like light gray coming from the bottom because I'm imagining that the the light is hitting the ground, which is light gray in this case, and coming back to the to the paper roll. So you will get this kind of like a light gray, same color of the of the floor uh, to call it somehow. And you will get that on the paper too. Um, and now we jump into the most fun part which is I already have all the ingredients, everything that I need to make this look better. So I just have to paint um, and do um, be more free, I guess, like freely just using whatever information I got. In this case is a lot of a lot of shadow uh, information, a lot of bounce light information, highlights and all that and just put it uh, together, just giving it more detail overall. So usually with detail, I always go just um, a smaller brush, like a smaller brush size. That's, uh, that's usually what I go right away with detail, but sometimes it's only for cleaning things, like, like some surface just need to be cleaned, not too much to have a small brush and uh, putting a lot of detail there, you know? Um, and I call it detail pass because it's mostly looking for mistakes, looking for errors, trying to put uh, everything together to make it look more professional, I guess, less sketchy and stuff like that. Let's be, let's be honest, like you could already use this uh, somehow, you know, like it is this is not like super perfect, but it's uh, good enough. Like it, not, it looks decent. So, but now we're going to push a little bit farther and try to make it even more, more detailed, more uh, specific in some areas like this paper, these papers here need to have even more layers. And the way that the paper is cut, you can, you can also clean that things like that. Right. So that kind of that that's the kind of thing that I'm looking for here. Also, opportunities to make it look cleaner um, and to add definition. So, for example, here 
I'm going to be adding a little bit more of uh, intense highlight because I like the, you know, to give that punch, I guess, at the end. And I don't want it to be just increasing the contrast on the on the image. I, I want it to be more in control of it. So I'm just adding even more extreme highlights there. But keeping the rule that is a cylinder shape. So it will be crazy to do some kind of like, like a spot kind of a, a light. So it has to be this kind of like long, soft kind of a highlight going across the whole surface of the cylinder even if the cro the surface is broken and the edges of the paper are like are rough and all that so that's the kind of um, effect that i'm trying to do there uh, you can also look for places where you can increase the level of detail without working much uh -huh. For example, places you can paint really tiny things to make it look even like way better. And those areas are, are difficult to find. Like it, I guess it's with experience you kind of know where to do it. But in, in a few minutes, you know you wanna know uh, what I mean about that. <clears throat> Here, adding these highlights a little bit more intense will make this uh, material here look even more regal or whatever but I don't want to go too far with it also you can you can use this step to finally decide what to do with some shapes here I didn't really pay too much attention about how it was put together um, because it's pretty I don't know it's pretty intuitive it's just the paper is just being grabbed by this thing. <clears throat> but you can clean for sure. You can clean the edges. You can take out a lot of the um, mistakes, I guess, or lines that are like, um, you know, that doesn't look too elegant. I'm trying to keep a little bit of the original sketch always. So because it looks more um, traditional looking, I guess. I decided to make this softer. So I'm adding a little bit more of the color of the background there. Using a low um, opacity on that brush really helps to do that. And you can see the progression very clear, very easily. <clears throat> Also texture, here I'm adding a little bit of dark spots to kind of make it look like it, it's a bit dirty in some parts, the paper. And that also helps to kind of sell the idea of it. Like it makes it look a bit, a bit more, I'm not saying hyper-realistic or anything, it's just that it makes it look less, less perfect. And that's always good when stuff doesn't look like super, super perfect, it has some some things here and there that make it look um, less clean. And that also helps to establish what kind of material it is. Maybe uh, it's being, a lot of people have grabbed it. Uh, it's, it's kind of old, uh, whatever it is, whatever it is the story that you want to tell, uh, this helps sell that idea. <clears throat> So right now I'm thinking maybe in the center there's an opportunity to add detail there that's gonna work perfectly. And yeah, if you clean some of the shadows there, you make it look like the the paper is more together. Like they're they're so it's so tight in there between those two papers that you can barely see the shadows, uh, like a like a big shadow there. So the shape is almost the same between the, paper, the one paper and the other one. And the shadow is exactly the same um, shape of the paper on top. So it, it looks like it, there, it, ha it has more detail in those areas just because it looks like it's more in focus because that area has more detail, right? So that's the kind of detail 
management, I guess, you have to make to to finish this kind of uh, piece. Anyway, uh, I hope you like this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I just wanted to remind you that I have a Patreon, and it's mostly material from my comic book. Uh, the link is in the description, and you can download this PSD there if you would like to see it up close, as well as others. Thank you very much for your time, and see you on the next one. Bye.